All right, first one to the site for once. This past week I was always just getting here after activities had begun, making calls and stuff in the morning, just slow you down. So over the weekend I scrambled up into the house to get some stuff for uh, Ed, and I noticed that there weren't any verts tied to these sticks that were embedded in the footer in the garage wall. And I thought, well, it's probably because of the threshold for the garage door, you don't want the rusty ends of them going bad showing right there so <clears throat> the rest of the walls don't have it but come to find out i checked with the concrete contractor and she said um there was no separate detail for the garage wall from the full wall of the basement however they've never put verts in because it's backfilled inside and out um on both sides whereas you got an open side obviously to the inside of the basement so she's never seen anybody draw any extra verts in so uh she just you know, made a decision to leave them out, and that's how they've done it. So that's what we'll do, um, which is why I got the, you know, experts to do their thing. I was thinking here, watching the footer go on, I could do that in the future for myself, um, which would be a fun thing to do probably the one time, and then that's I'm over it. But I'd like to give it a shot. Um, you do end up buying all that 2x12 to get the forms made, um, and so it would be best if you needed 2x12 that you could live with having a little concrete film on on your current project or something else. So that's a benefit. And the stakes and stuff like that are all stuff you'd want to have to use again several times to pay them off. Although I guess you could use something cheaper. Here they are rolling up. And then we got a um, mason coming today because I think we discussed that you couldn't pour a solid monolith or a negative space inside the concrete wall for under the chimney so the rest of that needs to be built in block and um, I've done some block but I'm not about to do it myself underneath a chimney like that so we'll have a specialist look at it but looks like the guys are here so we'll get back to you when we're getting ready to do something more exciting than me wandering around blathering well we're just getting down to being ready for concrete here they got two by six that fortifies the wall at the top on those must be steel because they're a little rusty Things that come out. Oh, I'm sure you could probably walk on that. I'm not sure. I'm fairly certain you could walk on it. Also, in a situation like this where you're trying to babysit what's going on. And so, all of our window openings that coordinate to our beams. Again, you could have just a pocket everywhere and then fill it with a block if you didn't want any windows here when you were all done. Um, or if you wanted to get real crazy, you could have, you could try to cut your steel custom to fit without having to be. Um, well, no, it still would have to come get turned around inside and get pulled out. So probably could at least reduce the amount of openings that way by not just using whatever he's got for minimum lengths that'll do the job that still stick out. But that's asking somebody to cut up on their steel inventory, which is more expensive than just borrowing it for the sake of the project. So there's our pockets for our chimney. And I talked to the masons, to the mason today who will build me out and around on the other side in block. Um, and that'll just get poured cavities solid with mortar and rebarred and pinned into the fo uh, footer But it has to have the same pockets in it to get these beams to come down and come out and then later the pockets are filled the rest of it's just going to be window holes <clears throat> and So we got that returned over there to load with the beam to that little like pilaster over on the other end with the beam <clears throat> So we'll have that pocket coming through here I'm going to reiterate and remind them right now because I just remembered. And then the wood stays. And they'll knock the forms off and leave. And as I come around to install glass block windows, I can pop that stuff out and use it as I please. Those ones will want to fill because they just are clearing these beams out for now. Um, but uh, I'll get my packs from the garage floor pour through one of those openings first. And then we'll have the guy back to fill his uh, pockets in both the interior brick base or the chimney base that he built me <clears throat> but also in the exterior uh, fill that in and finish it and then patch up these two holes for me and then there was something else that we need to do I might ask him about installing my glass block windows he might be able to do that for such a crazy good price that I don't want to mess with it so we'll see <clears throat> super cool of him to be available in the next few days to start because it's like otherwise he's really busy so it's a bit of a crunch time price but that's fine with me we'll get it done i hadn't expected to have to do it but this way we'll get it done the string i don't know if we're just gonna I, it's only apparently on the three walls of the garage so i don't know if we're gonna eyeball something with that sometimes i use a string when i set an lvl and stuff to see that it looks straight 
Um, it seems like they should be able to trust this hardware to keep it straight, so I don't know, find out what the string's about. The doorway opening over there is set, same as the threshold, so that the floor that we pour in the garage comes out flush with the face of the foundation wall and is on top of the actual threshold hole, which they're using a reusable aluminum to frame out these two pockets for me rather than wood. So that's pretty sweet. And I guess the forms will come off tomorrow afternoon, so we're doing it. This is Monday afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, we'll pop the forms off. And a week uh, to the next Tuesday will be when we set this back down again. And I have to do all the stuff that I've outlined has to be done before then, so come back when the pump truck gets here again. I was wondering whether it would be stiff enough here to just keep from coming out, but it looks like this is their solution to fit to the raw end of their footer, which looks like it works just fine. They've also got it on the inside as well. So those little areas, you just slap a little plywood on there, rock and roll. Uh, pump truck, he's queued up again. Ready to go. So probably just work until the concrete shows up. I gotta get him set up, which took a few, probably 15, 20 minutes anyway last time. Get his outriggers out, get his boom up, get him ready to suck up the concrete. So still a little bit of a ways away, but not much. All right, here we go again. Get the truck idling up. Got his water here ready for cleaning himself out. Got his Snorkus Dorcas hanging down over there. Smells like lubricant mold release. Smells like fluid film, kind of, basically. It's got a little drizzle on it there, so whether or not we have problems, I'm sure we won't. Got to keep her lubed up. I was looking at that string around the outside of the garage, he says, because it's around the inside of the main wall that he's got to check straightness. There it is, dry line there. So it's just pink dry line on the outside of this wall for whatever reason. Probably because he's got bracing like this inside and out on that wall and just on the outside here. So for whatever reason, it just ended up being drawn around. Maybe because it stays out of the way of the concrete tube, bumping it and whatever like that if you can. But uh, he ended up with the uh, hooks and stuff for the 2x6 out here. He's got this type of a thing happening too a little bit. And I think we looked at how the plywood's just sitting down in there and tied together and braced with some stuff to hold it up and around that corner. So there you go. Let him get started making some headway here and we'll come set up maybe and get some time lapse maybe. Maybe. If you're good. top of the wall our rough opening for our egress window is three-sided pressure treated lumber but at the form stop at the four foot length that they are normally <clears throat> the threshold is actually down in there and so a little bit that tipped over in there whatever he's dippered it out with the trowel and just pitched it away they can just get uh, you know just a rough opening so it shouldn't be a big deal there the rest of our windows are all exactly the same size box, all exactly the same size glass block unit, other than the extra deep one at the back to get the major lifter, lifting beam out. And then uh, the foreman just let me know the long ground or the long 
um, rebar here, this extra stick is to ground our electrical service if they'll let us get away with that rather than pushing ground rods into the ground here. So uh, if so, we'll just bend it over and around against the new wall and when the house comes down from above, we'll just notch the sill plate, which is handy. And you can see the notches on the tabs that are sticking into the mold wall on both sides, holding the mold wall in on both sides. The pin that's then jammed with that little taper uh, is what you take apart to let them out. That's what you gotta break the end off before you can waterproof it, and they'll be sticking to the inside as well. But you also notice they got notches, and your horizontal rebar sits right in the notch. So, it just puts you right where you wanna be, and so you can be sure if you're working on a new poured foundation, if you can locate those tabs that have been broken off, you can be sure that they're essentially at the elevation that the rebar is located in case you're trying to miss it, or you know, what have you. Same with the weeps were installed in the footer mold and slid all the way down to the floor and stop. So they are all sitting on the bottom of the excavated hole, which should be where you want to run the pipe as well. So things are really shaping up. Let's do a little more uh, time lapse here so I can take this call. So they went around the one time and got it filled part way up and presumably let that get a little tighter. And now they're coming their way back around, filling it up, topping it off. And so the guy running the pipe will tell the crane operator to cut it now and again. If he's not <clears throat> fast enough, he'll just turn it out into the hole and spray it on the ground, which <clears throat> I think is going to kind of bone me on getting my sight drain around thought about it and they've done such a good job of keeping it from getting knocked full of shit I figured well they can handle filling these molds too but I should have thought about how the extra concrete's going to go down there if there's anywhere for it to go <clears throat> so lesson learned <clears throat> see how much of a problem it creates when we come to get the tile line routed along underneath there I think I'm going to take a stab at that Wednesday, day after tomorrow. Another thing I was noticing is the uh, pressure treated lumber that they use for the jam that will be left in for the egress window is two by eight, which is of course seven and a quarter inches wide whereas the actual wall is eight inches wide. So you end up with a little bit of concrete um, around the edges of it, which ultimately just help trap it in there, which is interesting. And then they'll push the anchor bolts down in, leave them up high enough for me to apply an inch and a half treated lumber plate, sill plate to it after a gasket, and then uh, countersink it and put a nut on it like we were talking about, and then cut the rest of that off flush completely all the way around so there's nothing sticking up the sides the pressure treated sill plate when it's time to set the house back down again. And over here they've gotten to <clears throat> everything. The uh, threshold for the garage door is in there. And that's just troweled between these two stoppers that hold it. There isn't anything. You can't set something down in there the way the window opening is. Uh, I don't think. Because of uh, air bubbles and stuff rising over that long of a span. In the case of a window opening, we shouldn't see too many air bubbles, if any, underneath it. It may take that vibrator and go right around underneath there real good, each one, to do that. Make sure that isn't a problem. And it looks back like I had thought we would put a notch and there'd be something at this end. Uh, but we've got a real nice opening to put the new beam through and then that whole outside corner will be notched and it looks like the same is going to go on down at the other end because there's no um, good reason to put something on the outside 
it's not as though the beam's going to try and slide over and it's probably just going to break off from there anyway so they know their materials and they don't ask too much of them or do stupid try to create stupid geometry with them that doesn't make any sense this is our second concrete truck and our third sitting over there quite a lot more on this one versus the footer footer was like 40 yards i'll have to ask what we end up with for volume here They plan on three trucks. I don't know where the rest of it's gonna go. If we're, we must be just down to the bitter end of this one. Because there's only <clears throat> the top of a third of the wall left to do, although I think it's quite far down there. I have to go right in there and look actually. I don't know how they fill it yeah see the first time it's only a third of the way up the wall that's why so and the way that they hang he's using that hardware the way that he set them he had a concrete circular concrete stake on the middle of it um, so it could skate back and forth and pivot on that and he could get the one side tacked and then the other side tacked it's a nice way to do it tricky tricky and these are all built from ripped oh I'm sorry these are two by eight plus the plywood which keeps it square but it also gets you out to the true depth of the footing itself by applying the plywood to it. So that's doing double duty on there. I thought they would have been hollow with a ang uh, one angle brace through them I was picturing. But sure, use the plywood to keep it square and to fit it tightly. Got some braces inside, holding us where we want to be. Now I said to the foreman, you look down this wall and it's not straight. You know what I mean? You look down there. But that's because it's been plumbed down from the actual structure, which is gonna be more important for us here. When you're doing a new build, you want that thing to be lightning straight so that we can build on it lightning straight and keep everything perfect. But there's no use in pulling that straight if it pulls you out from underneath. How do I describe it? If it gets you out and then your ragged edge of your sheathing boards and stuff, so you see in some cases those stick down, then you run into trouble where you're holding a gap or the building, the weight of it is actually on the edges of the sheathing, which can buckle it out here and rip up and bend the siding and stuff, monkey it all up. So better to have the foundation outside edge back from the sheathing a little bit rather than over and underneath it for the sake of being perfectly straight. Uh, because it, not only that, if it's real bad, it can make a shelf out here that actually sticks out proud of the siding or something. So you want to avoid all those things and we just end up with um, creating this based on plumbing down the features of the building itself and then making sure that we stay behind that sheathing. All right, the pump truck just peeled out of here. <clears throat> he dumped out a little bit of leftovers that he was rinsing out with, which should just disappear in with the gravel when we're finished. Anything that cures up uh, on the ground to a solid chunk of concrete, there's plenty of voids and stuff here and here to kick it off into. Uh, the anchor bolts, I just walked around and gave them a glance. If any of them are way out of whack, I'll just tip them closer to plumb. Sometimes they settle or move. 
and so that makes it easier. You always want to like with body filler and everything else, Bondo and stuff, you want to just do what you can while things are liquid before they turn into a solid. No point in fighting with it later. Trying to thread a nut down onto it. <clears throat> Got some bubbling and frothing and that's how we know everything's doing its thing. These guys are a well-oiled machine. Super cool to see. Seem to get along well and everybody knows their role and communicate, hustle friendly with me and the homeowner and stuff so no complaints at all i've had some inane questions and stuff that may come as a surprise if i'm taking on a project of this magnitude and it's like you don't know this and you don't know that well sometimes you forget the amount of stuff that i do know uh about this type of thing is pretty considerable but there are gaps everywhere it's just like with everyone so they've been real cool with answering questions and just clearing things up i was careful not to try to say anything look to me like a mistake or anything i'm just trying to make sure it is how it should be and it, and it is you know so that's good um obviously it's a custom fit to the house above it it's not a perfect square foundation as a result or as perfect as they could make it if it was for a new build and that's on purpose because we want to fit this house like a glove all the bolts are justified out so that we're in the center of the sill not necessarily in the center of the foundation wall Everything's clamped tight when, you know, there's no fat here to trim. We don't have unnecessary geometry, unnecessary parts. This is good enough to poke it in there and to support it. There are things on here that are official provisions for keeping things square and tight. And then there's solutions like that and boarding this up here that keep you moving. And, you know, an engineer or something would be, you know, to start with the footer would be all formed square. And then you're trying to get on the outside of... Uh, you know, trying to land a seam between a shorter uh, form piece and a, and a full depth form piece and have the corner come in on the exact outside corner of the footer. And that's all stuff that slows you down out here when you're working in an environment like this, slip, sliding around and crawling around on stuff like a billy goat. And it just doesn't make any sense to go to the extent that you might there if you had all the time in the world. That does the job just fine. So there's just, what do they call that? Picking your battles, essentially. But in the in the design build world, it's just... I mean, tolerance is something that kind of comes in to play there. It's just not that high a tolerance of an area, you know? So you do what you can to get the areas that have to be dead nuts on perfect, and you save the effort in other places. So this is just as your sticks around inside holding things up. It's exciting. I can't tell you how long I was telling them how long I've been wanting to do something like this to this place. I'm going to have to cut the main beam back, I think, to the first uh, joist because there's no longer room for him to exist within this wall. The new beam location is to the left of him here as we're standing, so it's going to have to be lopped off so the raw end we keep goes right down in the space. And then we could take the weight off when we're on the outside wall enough to cut him into sections and take him and leave him lay on the floor for now, but eventually he'll get you know flung out of there and taken to the dump. But um, And then we'll be on our new steel, which is coming uh, at the end of this week. Got that finally figured out. That's a W8 by 10 that we're going to use, which is an 8 inches wide, 8 inches tall, 10 pounds per foot in terms of its um, composition, rather than the thickness of the three aspects of an I-beam. It's almost, it's just essentially, it's physical cross-section uh, size and it's weight by the foot. So it's a handy thing to spec out. It seems light to everybody that I mention it to. Uh, we are under it with three columns. One, two, three, and then in the other direction, I'm doing double up LVL on one of the joists, and we got a column under that. Could we have had fewer columns and a heavier beam? Probably, but uh, my architect has been effective, and he got me what I needed when I needed it by. But um, I think in the future, I'm going to be more clear about trying to save on the number of columns and just exactly what that means in all other aspects here. It's not going to hurt anything to have some posts in the basement here. Certainly everybody has posts in their basement. But at my place, if I'm really trying to save on how many posts are used and I'm willing to up the beam to something real heavy, <clears throat> this looks like he's 8 by 8 It might be 10 by 10 mm, Not exactly sure. Anyway, uh, you know, something more like this underneath my place or even more like that, potentially. But there's all kinds of, you know, benefits to that. Then you can put a trolley on it and have, like, a chain fall down in the basement for moving stuff and down, up and down 
you know, along the floor. I kind of want to do a machine shop in my place someday downstairs and stuff. So being on the concrete down there would be effective. And um, if it's radiant concrete floor, also the machinery would be a comfortable working temperature and contribute to help heating my place. And then furthermore, if I'm overhead, if I align myself to the main beam in some cases, I can lift uh, if I've got the right amount of posts and I've spec'd it out to be able to do that. So things to be thinking about for the future here. But I think this is like such a massive upgrade for this little house. It's just awesome. I can't say enough about how exciting it is. Just got to button some things up so that we can set it back down. I'm going to make sure, I'm basically going to crawl around on the cured top of it once they're long gone after stripping it. And make sure there's nothing sticking down from the old sill. And, uh, you know, just little inspections and stuff like that so that when it comes time to set it down, there are no hang-ups. And then we'll start chipping away at everything else that there is to do. Probably starting by getting gas and water and the sewer rebuilt over into this space so that we're done outside and we can backfill with confidence, get the, the loop in for the downspouts and finish the backfill, get a cursory grade out here and get some number one bank run out here on top and grade that out and start... Uh, you know, maybe some seating and stuff on it if we're not going to need heavy machinery anymore. The biggest thing we're going to do outside here is take a big stripe out of this to rebuild the sewer. So I will have to get that done. Then when we're done disturbing things, I'll get my sweeper on. We'll sweep down the old driveway, fix up this lawn area, decide what we're doing with those sidewalk pavers. All kinds of stuff going on here. Not quite even done covering this portion yet, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting excited, guys. I'm getting excited. Are you getting excited? All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.